The main character is reincarnated as an extremely handsome actor from an ordinary gynecologist. What's more, his mother turns out to be his idol in his previous life. I, when he intends to live with I and his previous memories, an accident happens. I's accidental death makes him determined to join the chaotic entertainment industry to find the truth. During then, because of his handsomeness, he wins the favor of five sexy celebrities, one of whom is I. What's the conspiracy behind all this? Like and subscribe, and let's start today's recap. The story begins before the reincarnation of the male protagonist Goro. He is an obstetrician gynecologist. At this moment, he is watching the concert of his idol I in front of the TV. I, 16 years old this year, is the absolute ace of idol group B. Komichi. Goro loves Ai so much that he believes she will become the brightest star. Just then, a nurse suddenly reminds Goro that I will be on her hiatus, which is a huge blow to Goro. But as a big fan of Ai, he believes she must have her own reasons. When the nurse asks Goro why he likes Ai, Goro recalls a past. Four years ago, during his internship, Goro befriended a patient named Serena. Serena loved Ai, always dreaming of having Ai's face in her next life. She once asked Goro if he had ever imagined what it would be like to be reborn as an idol's child. Nope, Goro replied at that time. He thought Serena was lovely herself, and she could try to become an idol after recovery. If she could debut, he would like to become a fan of hers. Serena was so pleased with Goro's answer that she hugged him excitedly. However, Serena's life ceased at the age of 12 after her deteriorating condition. Goro deeply regretted the passing of Serena, whose question about rebirth then came into his mind. So he searched for Ice information, and was attracted by her. Since then, he has become a big fan of Ai. As the memory ends, so does Garo's lunch break. He returns to the office, where he meets her patient, a 16-year-old pregnant girl. As a fan of Ai, Goro recognizes her immediately, but instead of confirming it to her, he only dares to hide and peek at her. The man coming with Ai is her agency president, Saito. Saito asks who the father of her child is. While Ai replies that it is her secret, Goro finds the off-camera Ai really cute, but the fact that she is pregnant is difficult for him to accept. After a series of checkups, Ai is very healthy, and she is pregnant with twins. Saito is worried that Ai's idol career will be affected and wants her to give up the babies. Ai is hesitant, asking for Garo's opinion. As a doctor, Goro tells her she is the only one who can decide whether to keep her children, and he hopes that she will seriously consider it before making a decision. After work, Goro overhears two passers-by discussing that their idol is married and pregnant. One of them mentions that if he ends his life now, he may have the opportunity to become his idol's child. Goro doesn't think much about it, because he is concerned about Ai's pregnancy. As a fan, he can accept Ai falling in love, but not her pregnancy, because having babies may really cause her idol career to cease, and thus he can no longer see her being the shining one on the stage. Just as Goro is trying to refresh his mind on the rooftop, he meets Ai. During their chat, Goro reveals Ai's true identity and asks her what she plans to do next. I firmly answers that she plans to give birth to the twins, but she will not make it public, because she knows very well that as an idol, lies are her weapons, which will help her keep shining on the stage. It is difficult for her to be an idol and a mother at the same time, so she can only lie to allow herself to juggle both identities. Goro didn't expect Ai to be stronger than he thought, and he feels that she is even more dazzling than a star. He supports her idea, and promises to help her give birth to the twins safely. Before Ai's expected date of childbirth, Goro meets a man in black on the road. The man asks if he is Ai's doctor. Ai used a pseudonym when she came to the doctor, so Goro wonders why the man knows about her hospitalization. He suspects the man is a stalker and questions him, while the man seems to reject revealing his identity and flees in a hurry. For the safety of Ai, Goro wants to catch up with him. However, when he chases the man near the cliff, he is pushed down. Goro is seriously injured and his life is coming to an end. Just then, he suddenly thinks of what the passerby man has said. If he ends his life now, will he have the opportunity to become his idol's child? With this beautiful dream, Goro closes his eyes. Surprisingly, when he opens his eyes again, he has become a son named Aquamarin. He doesn't know why he has memories of his past life and vows to solve the mystery one day. Besides Aquamarin, I also gave birth to a baby girl named Ruby. Under the care of I, they live a very happy life. More than half a year has passed since I suspended her idol works. She does not want to give up her career, so Saito has made a series of comeback plans for her. While I is working, Saito's wife, Miyako, takes care of the twins. Other than that, I should not take her babies out. If there's really an emergency to go out, she has to lie that she is helping Saito and Miyako take care of their children. 
Ai's first activity is to be on a live show. While Miyako is asleep, a Kwamarin secretly turns on the TV to watch the show. When Ai nearly blurts out her children in the show, a Kwamarin is greatly frightened. Although the staff of the show all consider Ai a has-been, the moment Ai stands on the stage, everyone can't help but be attracted to her. Ruby was also a fan of Ai in her previous life, so when she hears Ai's voice on the TV, she hurriedly climbs out of bed. A Kwamarin has discovered Ruby's identity. It turns out that she once secretly used Ice mobile phone to quarrel with Ice haters, which was noticed by A Kwamarin and he was shocked. After communicating with each other, they determined that their experiences were the same. A Kwamarin does not think this is a good thing for I. If possible, he hopes I gave birth to two ordinary children. A Kwamarin never wants breastfeeding because of shyness. While Ruby, on the other hand, thinks that as a mother, it is normal for I to breastfeed, they quarrel about it. While Ai is out working, Miyako exposes her truest thoughts in front of the twins. She married Saito because she thought she would have the opportunity to work with young handsome actors. Unexpectedly, her job is to take care of two fatherless children. Miyako is very dissatisfied with Saito's arrangement, so she films Ai's mother's manual, intending to sell the scandal of Ai's unmarried childbirth to the media, and then use the money to have fun with some cute money boys. To protect Ai, the twins disguise themselves as divine messengers, warning Miyako not to hurt Ai, who is the chosen girl of God, and Miyako's mission is to protect her and her children. If Miyako disobeys God's command, her life would be threatened, but if Miyako keeps them a secret, she will have a chance to fulfill her dream of remarrying a handsome idol. Miyako is a very lustful woman, as long as she can marry a good-looking man, she is willing to follow all their instructions. After the crisis is resolved, A Kwamarin praises Ruby's acting skills, believing that she has the potential to become an actress. Because Ruby, like Serena, is very obsessed with Ai, A Kwamarin can't help but think of Serena, but little does he know that Ruby's previous life was Serena. As I gets back to her stage, B Kamichi's popularity has greatly improved, and their new album has also achieved good results. Unfortunately, the company takes a big cut of their income, and the left money has to be shared, so I ends up getting just a small amount of money, to provide the twins with a better life. I is determined to work hard to earn money. For that, I spends a lot of time practicing dancing and singing, and the twins feel sorry for her. A Kwamarin asks Miyako why I can't do the activities by herself, and Miyako reveals that idol group's strength is their superiority in number, which they use to compete with independent entertainers for limited work resources. Although I is a top idol in the group, she's still not comparable to an independent entertainer. The twins want to cheer for I, so they ask Miyako to take them to the concert of Bikamichi. When I is performing, she suddenly recalls what a fan said about her, that her smile is too professional and lacks human feelings. But each idol has her own persona. Either the way of blinking or the curvature of smiles is carefully designed. I knows that she, as an idol, is made up of lies, but she can't change the situation. Just then, I notices her twin babies in the crowd. Their cuteness touches I, and she smiles from heart. After the concert, some fans upload the video of the twins dancing to social platforms, which receives a lot of attention. There are also fans photographing I's smile and praising her. Seeing this photo, I finally understand understands what kind of smile her fans want. By the time the twins are one year old, they no longer have to hide their speaking ability and can naturally communicate with Ai. With her gender advantage, Ruby often acts cute in front of Ai. At the same time, the strength and popularity of Ai have also been enhanced. From model to radio assistant, she has been steadily expanding the scope of her career. One day, Ai receives an offer of filming a TV drama, which will be her first time in a drama. The twins are looking forward to her performance and follow her to the set. Miyako becomes Ai's manager, and in order not to expose the secret of by having children out of wedlock. Miyako explains to the director that the twins are her children. While wandering the set, A Kwamarin meets the director, who warns him not to cry or interrupt the filming, otherwise he will throw him out. A Kwamarin hurriedly promises that he will be a good boy and stay quiet. The director is surprised that A Kwamarin can say so many words, thus giving him his business card and inviting him to participate in the shoot. A Kwamarin is not interested in it, and he just wants the director to give I more opportunities. The director thinks I looks cute, but if she wants to become an actress, she still needs a little more luck. There are three types of actors. The first is popular stars, who can attract a lot of audiences. The second is those with talents, who are responsible for ensuring the quality of the work. And the last is newcomers, who just need to bring a little freshness to the screen. I, the same as the other newcomers here, is still accepting investment. If she can't get the audience's favor, she won't get another opportunity. Thankfully, I is doing very well so far, and she is very noticeable in the camera. 
When the drama is aired, I and the twins turn on the TV on time, only to find that there's only one scene of I in the drama. A Kwamarin is so upset that he immediately calls the director and questions him. The director explains that the drama was filmed to promote the lead actress, and the producers worry I's outstanding look will affect the actress, so they cut a lot of her parts. The director expresses his regret, and proposes to offer I an acting chance in a film, on the condition that A Kwamarin must be also involved in the shooting. Aquamarin suggests that the director choose Ruby, who is more talented in acting, but the director insists on his choice. He loves Aquamarin. If it weren't for him, he wouldn't have let I join in the film. On the day of filming, Ruby follows Aquamarin to the set. I and Aquamarin's shooting time is different, and Ruby cries when she can't find I. Just then, a little girl named Kana stops Ruby. She is so arrogant that she tries to get them out. Kana is talented in acting, able to cry in 10 seconds when asked. She also participates in the film, and since she found the original script did not have the roles acted by I and Aquamarin, she concludes that they must have taken improper means to get the filming chance. Coupled with the fact that I had only one scene in the TV drama, she mistakenly thinks that I has very poor acting skills, so her parts were all cut. When the twins hear these words, they are so upset. The film tells the story of a group of women who have no confidence in their appearance and undergo plastic surgery in a rural hospital, while Aquamarin and Kana play the weird children living in the village. Aquamarin believes that the director probably has found him weird in real life as his IQ seems to be much higher than his peers. Based on his conjecture, Aquamarin faithfully and well presents the role. His prominent acting skills give Kana a heavy blow. Thinking that she is far inferior to him, the little girl breaks down and cries out. After filming, the director tells Aquamarin that the most important thing for an actor is the ability to communicate, so Kana's arrogant personality will only bring her trouble in the entertainment industry. He hopes today's experience will make Kana understand her shortcomings. In contrast to Kana, Aquamarin understands his intentions and acts accordingly even though the director didn't teach him. He appreciates Aquamarin's performance and expects him to be an excellent actor who can interpret the true part of the roles. After that, the director is nominated for a director prize. Among all the actress involved, Ice performance is the most outstanding. Taking this opportunity, I becomes more popular with her job offers gradually increasing. Therefore, the living conditions of their family have improved a lot, and their life is simple but warm. When I reaches 20, the twins are also of kindergarten age. Aquamarin searches for Garo's name on the internet, only to discover that his body has not yet been found. One day, the kindergarten teacher teaches them a dance, which Ruby is so resistant to. Actually, she refuses to participate in any dance performances, because she was seriously ill in her previous life, and she never tried intense sports. Aquamarin does not yet know the identity of Ruby's past life. He reminds Ruby that she still has a long life to go and that she should try any sport she wants. With Aquamarin's encouragement, Ruby begins trying. Coincidentally, I is preparing for an upcoming concert and she offers to practice with Ruby. Ruby has seen I's performance videos countless times, so it's easy for her to spot where I falls short. As she is trying to demonstrate the correct movement, she accidentally falls. I finds that Ruby seems to be very afraid of falling, as her move is like she is ready to protect herself from falling at any time. She reminds Ruby that if she is too afraid of falling, she will fall even more. With the help of I, Ruby finally gets rid of the psychological shadow of her past life. Meanwhile, Aquamarin hides in the doorway and sees Ruby's graceful dance, which makes him start wondering about her true identity. In the next scene, I contacts the twins' father. Because the twins have always been curious about their father's identity, she considers letting them meet, and tells him their current address. At this time, I already has more than 1 million followers, and her acting career has also achieved good results. Saito reminds I not to take the twins to meet their father to avoid being exposed to scandals. I promises Saito, but it is just her lie, and she isn't going to take his word for it. I used to consider herself unqualified to be an idol. When Saito invited her to join the idol group, she told him her story. She came from a single-parent family, and her mother was imprisoned for theft when she was little. She was then sent to an orphanage, but her mother never came to pick her up after release. I believe that idols must love their fans and infect them with smiles. However, she wasn't loved, and didn't have the ability to love others. In that case, she thought nobody would love her either, but Saito told her that idols singing and dancing on stage was a way to express their love to fans. Although she might not love the fans from heart, as long as she kept lying, the lie might become a reality one day. Convinced by Saito, I became an idol and started looking forward to the day when the lie becomes a reality. But she never expected that she would pay a terrible price for this. 
One day, a man in black comes to Ai's home, he gives Ai a bouquet and then asks about her twins. Ai is shocked that he knows about her having children, and before she can react to it, the man stabs her with a knife. He accuses Ai of her actions, shouting that she betrayed her fans, although she has always claimed that she loves her fans. It was all her lies. At the last moment of Ai's life, she speaks her true thought. To her, lies are love. She sang a lot of songs full of love, and in every moment of singing, she hoped that one day in the future, she would really be able to love her fans. Ai clearly remembers that the man's name is Ryosuke, and he often attends their handshake events. Ryosuke's gift to her was placed in the living room of her apartment. Ryosuke didn't expect Ai to actually recognize his identity, and she has been using her own way to love them. Thinking of how he just heard Ai, Ryosuke collapses and flees away. Aquamarin calls the ambulance, but Ai has lost too much blood to wait for it to arrive. She regrets that she will miss the performance at Tokyo Dome tonight, as well as the various activities that follow. And what makes her feel most grieved is that she can no longer be involved in the twins' life. Ai has never said, I love you, to her twins. Before closing her eyes, she expresses her love to them for the first and last time. This time it is not a lie, but from her heart. An hour later, Ice death is reported on TV, and the murderer is revealed to be a crazy fan of hers. Shortly after the crime, he voluntarily ended his life. This news is trending. Most people are sympathetic to Ice death, while some are deliberately using it to attract attention. Because the twins were registered as children of Saito and Miyako, they were not affected by the public response. Miyako decides to treat them as her children and asks their opinions. After receiving an affirmative response from the twins, they become a family. Ruby decides to become an idol like Ai, while Aquamarin has been wondering how to avenge Ai. He knows Ryosuke was the one who pushed him down the cliff. But Ryosuke was just an ordinary student with no detection ability nor information resources of the entertainment industry. So he suspects that someone leaked the secret of Ai having children to Ryosuke. In that case, besides Saito and Miyako, only their father knows the truth. Aquamarin trusts Saito and Miyako, so their father is likely to be the real murderer. Considering that I didn't have many friends, he believes the murderer must be one of the entertainers. They are blood related. If he can spot the suspicious ones, he can find the murderer through DNA identification. In order to realize the plan for revenge, the twins decide to enter the entertainment industry together. And Ruby also has the same idea of joining the entertainment industry. In her previous life, she suffered from a serious illness, and Ice Song was the only inducement for her to live. She is very glad that she can become Ice Child in this life. And after Ice death, she misses her every day. To become an idol like I, she signs up for idol selection, and she is confident that she will be the winner. However, her brother Aquamarin does not support her joining the entertainment industry. They are junior high school students, and will soon take the entrance examination for high school. He wants Ruby to focus on study. Ruby ignores his advice, because she will apply for the acting arts department, which only requires her academic performance to reach the passing line. If she becomes an idol, it doesn't matter even if her grades are poor. Aquamarin warns Ruby not to have illusions about being an idol, who will only get low income while having her daily life monitored by fans. Besides, an idol's career career can only last till her 30s at most, and it is difficult to continue working in the entertainment industry after that. Ruby, on the contrary, believes that she should be able to do what she wants for her life, and she doesn't want to idle away her time with nothing done in the end. Aquamarin knows he can't change Ruby's mind, and has to find another way. Seeing him leave, Ruby falls into a deep thought. Since Ice death, her brother seems to become another person, with the smile completely disappearing from his face. Also, he always prevents her from joining the entertainment industry, while he becomes the director's apprentice and lives a very busy day. Ruby guesses that he must be planning something, but he refuses to reveal anything. Aquamarin isn't the only one who changed. Saito left Tokyo and has not been heard from since. Therefore, Miyako had to take over his position and work hard to run the agency. In the second year after Ice death, the idol group Bikamichi officially announced its disbandment. To keep the agency afloat, Miyako expanded her business into internet celebrities. Ruby suggests that Miyako reassemble an idol group. Miyako, however, tells her that reality cannot always be smooth sailing, and it is difficult to find another talented idol like I. At this time, Ruby receives a call from the audition. The staff informs her she didn't make it through the second round. Knowing this, Miyako immediately comforts Ruby that this kind of audition usually has politics involved, and her strength was not assessed fairly. Not everyone can have both strength and luck like I. Unbeknownst to them, the call was actually from Aquamarin. Disguised as a staff of the audition, he deliberately misled Ruby to believe that she had lost. In addition, he has secretly sent withdrawal text on Ruby's mobile phone and blocked the real number of the audition. The director thinks Ruby has what it takes to become an idol, and he doesn't understand why Aquamarin wants to destroy her dream. But Aquamarin is quite stubborn on this. His purpose is to protect Ruby from going through what happened to their mom. As
As for the matter of revenge, he will do it by himself. A Quamran's plan is very thorough, but he missed one key point. Ruby's appearance. One day, Ruby gets scouted by a man, who wants to make her an idol. Ruby is very excited, thinking it must be fate. I was also scouted to be an idol, so she believes that mom is blessing her. However, both Aquamarin and Miyako are skeptical of the idol agency. The only difference is that Miyako is willing to support Ruby's dream, while Aquamarin just wants to keep her out of the entertainment industry. In order to investigate the idol agency, Aquamarin takes the business card of Miyako's agency and speaks to an idol of that agency as a scout. He invites the idol to Miyako's agency to inquire about the details of the agency she belongs to, and whether she would like to sign a new contract with them. Unexpectedly, the idol is very dissatisfied with her agency. She trains hard every day and performs pretty well in concerts. But the agency is promoting her teammate, who turns out to be the manager's girlfriend. Because of the unfair treatment, the relationship among the members of the idol group is quite awful, and several girls are ready to leave the group. Miyako does not fully believe what the idol said, because she knows pretty well how difficult it is to manage a group of young girls. When I was still alive, other members of Bikamachi also thought the agency favored I. But Aquamarin's idea is very simple. Whether or not the idol hides anything, he will not allow Ruby to join this idol group, so he intends to find a way to expose the agency. Miyako thinks Aquamarin's attitude is too extreme. She looks at the picture of Bikamachi and the twins, making an important decision. As Ruby decides to sign with the idol agency, Miyako Miyako asks her if she really wants to become an idol. Ruby's answer is very firm. She must become an idol like I. Miyako is impressed by Ruby's persistence. Therefore, she announces that she plans to form a new idol group and invites Ruby to join. Witnessing their signing process, Aquamarin has mixed feelings. After that, Aquamarin comes to the director. Since he is still a middle school student, he can't follow the director to work on the set, so he just participates in the post-production of the film. After learning that Ruby has finally embarked on the path of idolhood, the director is curious about Aquamarin's thoughts. Aquamarin has accepted this fact. Because Ruby is contracting with Miyako's agency, she won't be treated unfairly, and they'll be able to protect her. Hearing this, the director mentions that Aquamarin once wanted to become an actor, but before he finishes his words, Aquamarin interrupts him, saying that he just wants to work behind the scene now. The director wonders why, but Aquamarin doesn't give an answer immediately. He wanted to become an actor with the intention of taking revenge on his biological father who lurks in the entertainment industry. But it then came up to him that he can also get involved in the entertainment industry, and have real contacts with different entertainers even if he works behind the scene. He can't reveal this to the director, and thus says that unlike I, he is not talented in acting. The director tries to encourage him, telling him if he doesn't buy a ticket, he'll never win the lottery. Everyone is unique. Although he does not have the talent of I, I was not as intelligent as he is. Don't give up just because of failing once or twice. He can tell that Aquamarin still wants to be an actor, hoping he can work hard to chase his dream. At this moment, Aquamarin recalls what I once said to him, that she had always wanted him to become an actor. Unfortunately, just as Aquamarin is about to make a decision, the director's mom comes into the room to ask them to eat, interrupting their conversation. Soon after, the twins take the entrance examination of U2 High School together. This is one of the few schools in Japan that offers performing arts courses, and candidates must provide proof of their contracts with an agency. It is worth mentioning that Aquamarin applied for general subjects. In fact, with his grades, he could have chosen a better school, but in order to protect his sister, he chose U2 High School. After the interview, the twins meet Kana at school, who looks even cuter after growing up. As Ruby is laughing at Aquamarin's name, Kana recognizes them. She persists in her her dream of becoming a famous actress, thus applying for the performing arts department. She feels surprised to meet Aquamarin here, as the latter hasn't been involved in any film shooting for a long time, which is also a regret to her. Just then, Aquamarin tells her that he didn't apply for the performing arts department. Kana was surprised that Aquamarin did not apply for the performing arts department. In order to learn more about his experience in the past few years, she catches up with him. As a celebrity, Kana can't just chat in the cafe outside, so she invites Aquamarin to her home. Learning of Kana's concerns, Concerns, Aquamarin decides to take her to the director's house instead of going to Kana's. Having not seen Kana for years, the director is surprised by her arrival. Kana realizes this is likely because her popularity has dropped a lot in recent years, so the director's words give her a hard hit. During a tour of the director's studio, Kana finds that Aquamarin has not left the entertainment industry, but devoted himself to the behind the scene works. During these years, he has been learning from the director. The director still thinks Aquamarin is a good fit to be an actor, hoping Kana can help convince him. Since she happens to be filming a TV drama recently, Kana offers to secure a role for Aquamarin, who insists on not getting involved until Kana mentions the director's name. Kaburaji. I left behind three phones after her death. 
In both of the phones, there were only the contacts of Bikamichi members and the agency staff. This made A. Kwamarin realize that I had been working hard to protect her kids from exposing. Anyway, the crucial one is an old-fashioned mobile phone, which has a six-digit password, and when input incorrectly, the phone would lock for 30 seconds. It took A. Kwamarin four years to crack the phone's password. He then found the mobile phone stored the email addresses and phone numbers of more than a dozen people related to the entertainment industry, and Kaburaji is one of them. To find his biological father, Aquamarin accepts Kana's offer. She immediately contacts Kaburaji and successfully gets Aquamarin the role of a villain. When Aquamarin returns home, he tells Miyako that he is going to act in a TV drama, which is a manga adaptation and has aired three episodes so far. With most of the actors being newcomers, Miyako and Ruby watch the first episode, only to find those actors performing skills terrible. Even Kana, who was known as a genius child star, has regressed a lot in her acting skills. Aquamarin conveys Ruby's advice to Kana, who then gets upset. She explains that the target audience of this drama is the female audience who love watching handsome guys. So there are many models with outstanding looks in the drama, and acting skills are not important to them. Because the other actors are so poor at acting, Kana can't stand out too much. She still remembers how disappointed the manga writer was when she came to visit the filming set. The only good thing is that the actors and the staff behind the scenes are trying their best to complete their works. For the sake of the harmony of the work, Kana can only hold back. In the past, she showed off her acting skills too much, causing her to be very unpopular among other actors. And after her peak period, it was difficult for her to get a job again. Later, she understood the importance of communication, and decided to become a good actress who handled things smoothly and could contribute herself to the work. After explaining the ins and outs of the matter, she hands the script to Aquamarin. This reminds Aquamarin of how Kana accused him of using improper means to participate in filming. Unexpectedly, 12 years later, Kana would take the initiative to get a role for him. Kana also misses their past very much. She is excited to work with Aquamarin and hopes to create great work with him. Aquamarin carefully studies the script and the episodes that have already aired, finding that the behind-the-scenes team of this drama is quite excellent. Plus the heroine Kana is a professional actress, so overall this drama is not that bad. On the day of shooting, Kana reminds Aquamarin that since they only rent the location for one day, both rehearsal and shooting need to be done on the same day. With her introduction, Aquamarin meets the male lead, who turns out to be an arrogant person, but Aquamarin doesn't care, as he was then introduced to the one he cares about, the producer, Kaburaji, who is also the reason why Aquamarin would agree to film the drama. He intends to collect Kaburaji's hair or saliva during the process and determine whether he is their biological father through DNA testing. Aquamarin plays a stalker in the drama. After the first scene, Kana praises his excellent performance. Aquamarin, however, insists that his acting skills are very ordinary. He thinks Kana is probably impressed by how he acted when he was little, which was superb for a little boy, but his inner mind was over 20. Just then, Kana reveals what she thinks. She could see that he used a lot of tips when acting. Aquamarin, like her, has been practicing hard. In this dark entertainment industry, she is very happy to know that there is still someone trying as hard as her. Coupled with the fact that this is her first lead role in 10 years, she feels that her strength has been recognized. However, she does not yet know that the truth is not as beautiful as she thought. While stalking Kaburaji, Aquamarin overhears his true purpose in choosing Kana. Her salary has dropped a lot since leaving the agency, while she still has great fame, which they can use for publicity, this is a very good deal for him. After Kaburaji leaves, Aquamarin collects his cigarette butt. Then, in order to help Kana better complete shooting the last episode, Aquamarin carefully observes the set and the orientation of the camera. But Kana is unaware of Aquamarin's efforts. The moment the clapperboard is slammed, she immediately plunges into her acting. Kana's glory days were almost over during her elementary years, but she never gave up her career as an actress, and she finally got the starring role this time. Therefore, even if the other actors act very badly, she does not give up this work. The last episode is the climax of the show, with not only the confrontation between the male protagonist and the stalker, but also an important touching plot where the heroine will cry. The heroine has never understood what love is. Not until she was protected by the male protagonist does she feel loved and couldn't help but leave tears. Kana is moved by this part every time she reads the manga, so she specifically invited Aquamarin to join the filming, believing he would help her present the best possible shot. Thankfully, Aquamarin doesn't let her down. 
when she was desperate because of the actor's poor acting, a Kwamrin's appearance gives her hope. He first takes advantage of the blind angle of the camera to say ruthless words to anger the male protagonist. Then, as he changes his lines and position, the actor's acting skills seem to be less embarrassing. From an early age, a Kwamrin was very good at understanding the author's intentions. He knows that the focus of this plot is the heroine's tears. Therefore, he is willing to become a supporting role to set off Kana's acting skills. Kana also lives up to his expectations, perfectly interpreting the crucial scene of this drama. After the last episode aired, both the screenwriter and the audience give extremely positive feedback. At the celebration banquet, Kaburagi praises Aquamarin's acting skills. Before that, Aquamarin has confirmed that Kaburagi was not his father through DNA identification. To his surprise, Kaburagi takes the initiative to mention I. Because Aquamarin and I come from the same company, plus he and I look alike. Kaburagi is often reminded of I when seeing Aquamarin. He and I were well-connected colleagues, and occasionally he would introduce her to some good partners and some more private dating places. Aquamarin lies that he is a fan of I and wants to know who I was secretly interacting with. Kaburagi takes the opportunity to propose that he will tell Aquamarin everything about I on the condition that Aquamarin star in a love reality show. After that, Aquamarin ushers in his high school entrance ceremony. Kana, as the senior, introduces them to the general situation of the school. Ruby is an acting student, so her classmates are all beautiful girls and handsome guys. The first girl she befriends is her deskmate, Kotobuki, who has a hot figure, making Ruby quite jealous. During the lunch break, Ruby introduces Kotobuki to Aquamarin. When talking about how comfortable she is with her new school, Kotobuki says that she is very nervous because she is now surrounded by professionals. Aquamarin comforts her that there were not so many famous ones among the freshmen attending the entrance ceremony, according to his observation, so she doesn't need to be nervous. However, Ruby gives a different opinion. There is a very famous idol named Frill in their class. She did not attend the entrance ceremony because of her busy schedule. Frill also turns out to be Ruby's favorite idol right now. Just then, Frill happens to pass near them, considering that she and Ruby are classmates. Aquamarin takes the initiative to talk to her, hoping that she can get along with Ruby. Unexpectedly, Frill recognizes Aquamarin and Kotobuki. She has seen TV dramas filmed by Aquamarin and Kana, as well as magazine covers filmed by Kotobuki. She then expresses her appreciation for them. Since Ruby doesn't have any work yet, Frill can only encourage her to keep up studying hard. This conversation makes Ruby realize the gap between her and her classmates. In great sadness, she urges Miyako to form an idol group as soon as possible when she returns home. Aquamarin, hearing that Miyako is looking for an unsigned female artist, recommends Kana to her. For Kana, it is too sudden. From a rational point of view, actresses are more promising than idols, and it is very difficult to become a top idol like I. Therefore, she shouldn't give up her career as an actress, which is also what she's good at. Not to mention the fact that Ruby's company is just a small one, which can offer her limited guarantees. Just as Kana decides to reject Ruby, Aquamarin interrupts her. He can tell Kana is a very empathetic girl, and as he keeps praising her and pleading for her to be an idol with Ruby, Kana finally surrenders. The scene then cuts to Kana signing a contract with Miyako. She feels complicated, but at the same time happy about being colleagues with Aquamarin. Now, she'll have opportunities to learn filming skills from him. To initiate a topic, Kana asks Ruby what Aquamarin has been up to lately. Silent for a while, Ruby shows her a dating show called, My Love with a Star Begins Now, explaining that Aquamarin is one of the participants. There are a total of six entertainers in this reality show, all of whom are still high school students. The program will arrange for them to chat and date, while observing whether they can become a couple. They are all set in certain characters, and Aquamarin is asked to be a sunny and cheery boy. As he makes his debut, a girl named Memo is immediately attracted to him. Aquamarin also praises her cute appearance, which makes Kana, who has a crush on Aquamarin, very jealous. In fact, Aquamarin doesn't like any of the girls. The purpose of his filming the show is only to get information related to I. Although the show does not have scripts, the director provides advice to the participants in order to create some highlights and topics. During filming, Aquamarin has some interactions with a girl named Yuki. She knows exactly how reality shows work. In order to get more shots, she deliberately whispers in Aquamarin's ear, pretending that she has a good impression of him. Meanwhile, Ruby and Kana are learning how to become influencers. Miyako brings them an internet celebrity with an annual income of 100 million. Payan, a masked strength training YouTuber, he believes that the best way to quickly increase popularity is to participate in filming his videos. With Payan's help, Ruby and Kana put on masks and record a video with him. The length of the video is one hour, which was often faked by previous participants through editing. But Ruby and Kana really follow Payan to work out for an hour, which gains his appreciation toward them. At the end of the video, 
media, they are asked to take off the mask and introduce themselves. When asked for the group name, Ruby thinks of I and names their group B Kamachi. Meanwhile, Aquamarin's love show gains great popularity. Although some of the participants are obviously acting, most of them are just showing their strengths. Anyway, this show brings Aquamarin and the other entertainers to be friends. Among them, Yuki is the most popular, she is getting the favor of two boys on the show, and the audience is curious about who she will choose. Unlike them, Aquamarin avoids showing too much of himself, thus not getting much attention. Although he knows Memo has a crush on him, he doesn't want to develop a relationship with her. Memo is a very kind girl who cares about everyone in the show, especially a girl named Akane, who pays a lot of effort in the show, but as she is not good at showing her charm, there are barely her scenes. Her manager is very upset about it and puts her under a lot of pressure. The director suggests that Akane become the villainous and try to snatch Yuki's two suitors. At his suggestion, Akane first targets Nobuyuki, who has been interacting with Yuki, therefore, she and Yuki become love rivals. One day, Yuki snatches Kengo away from Akane, who doesn't want to pass up the chance to get along with Kengo. Hence, she stops Yuki, declaring that her behavior is graceless. Unexpectedly, her nail accidentally scratches Yuki's face, causing Yuki to be injured. After the filming, Yuki hugs Akane tightly, expressing her understanding of Akane's behavior and forgiving her. Akane is very impressed. Aquamarin, however, believes that things are not so simple, and he is worried that netizens will lash out at Akane. Sure enough, as soon as netizens learn the news of Yuki's injury, they start accusing and scolding Akane on the internet and even ask her to quit the show. No matter how hard Akane tries to apologize, it doesn't help. These negative comments drive her to be so sad. Just then, she recalls what Memo has said that apologizing meant you indeed did something wrong, and people would naturally accuse the one who said sorry. Subsequently, Akane's agency issues an apology online, which, however, doesn't quell the anger of netizens. Even the high school Akane attends start spreading her false rumors. This cyberstorm has a big impact on Akane, and she loses a lot of followers. In extreme sadness, Akane decides to get rid of the bad influence by ending her life. Memo has been keeping an eye on Akane's news. Knowing that she has been out on a typhoon day, Memo mobilizes all the participants to look for her. Luckily, Aquamarin finds her in time and saves her life. Just then, a passing policeman also notices Akane who is trying to commit a bad thing, taking them to the police station. Receiving the news, other participants rush to the police station. In response to the current situation, Aquamarin advises Akane to quit the show. However, if she quits, her dream to become a well-known actress will be thus suspended. Unwilling to give up her dream, Akane decides to continue filming the show. Aquamarin believes that the biggest culprit is the director and the crews of the show that deliberately instigates the public, as well as the netizens who spread vicious remarks. He does not want to just let them go. He reveals to reporters that Akane tried to end her life, which soon goes viral online. They then collect the footage of the show, as well as the video of Akane and Yuki hugging, edit a short film and post it online. As the video catches a lot of attention, netizens start to see the true side of Akane, and grow a better impression of her. Before Akane resumes filming, Aquamarin reminds her that she can properly disguise herself in the show, because lies are a way to protect herself, while exposing her true self can be hurtful. However, Akane doesn't know what kind of persona she can take. Just then, Memo and Yuki propose that Aquamarin, the only boy in this room, talk about his favorite type of girl as a reference. Aquamarin can't help but think of I, saying that he likes girls who can be shining on stage like I. Hearing this, Akane decides to try her best to make I appear in front of Aquamarin again, as a repayment for what he has done for her. Aquamarin, on the other hand, believes that no one can replace I. Surprisingly, Akane has a talent for intelligence collection. Based on only a little information on the internet, she not only roughly grasps I's living habits, but also analyzes I's growth experience, concluding that I was very good at hiding her personality with lies. When she returns to the filming studio, she plays I perfectly. The moment he sees Akane, Aquamarin feels like seeing I again. Akane is a talented actress. By imitating Ai, she gains the same charisma, and everyone is attracted to her. Aquamarin doesn't know what to do with Akane. When she comes to thank him for the video he made for helping her, he feels very nervous. Memo and Yuki notice that Aquamarin acts very different from usual. They test Aquamarin and conclude that he likes Akane. Teased by them, Aquamarin blushes and flees in a hurry. Memo and Yuki take the opportunity to ask Akane what she thinks of Aquamarin. Akane has a crush on Aquamarin. If he really likes her, she wouldn't reject him. Kana and Ruby watch the new episode of the show together, while Kana starts complaining about how dull the show is, because she has fallen in love with Aquamarin early on, and she doesn't want to see him with other girls. 
Unfortunately, the reality show is very popular, and she often hears people around her talking about Aquamarin's relationship with other girls. Just when Kana is feeling sad, Aquamarin suddenly stops her and proposes to skip class together. Because of Akane, Aquamarin has been thinking of I lately. He suddenly realizes that although they had lived together for several years, he did not know much about I. To relax, he takes Kana to the baseball field. Kana takes the opportunity to ask if he likes any girls on the show. Aquamarin explains that the ambiguous relationships shown on the show are fake. They're just workmates. As he chats with Kana, he becomes more and more aware of what he thinks of Akane. He doesn't like her, and the feelings he had were all because he saw the apparition of I in her. Towards the end of filming, Aquamarin and Akane talk about acting skills. He wonders why she is able to portray I so perfectly. Akane tells Aquamarin that she likes to read criminal profile books. In addition, she knows how to collect information about different characters on the internet and use her own ideas to understand them. Now she has mastered I's patterns of thought and behavior. Aquamarin is shocked. He believes that Akane's talent may help him find out the truth of the murder. In order to continue to keep in touch with Akane, Aquamarin expresses his affection for her on the show and takes the initiative to kiss her. After filming, Aquamarin and Kaburagi have a conversation. Kaburagi praises his performance on the show and reminds him not to release footage from the unpublished tape casually next time. Before parting, he and Aquamarin agree to meet next week, when he will tell him about Ice's secrets. After that, Aquamarin comes to celebration banquet of the show. While everyone else is celebrating, Akane feels a little nervous. Because Aquamarin kissed her on the show, they have to play as a couple for a while before announcing their breakup. Suspecting that Aquamarin doesn't like her, she plucks up the courage to ask if he just wants to maintain workmates with her. Aquamarin admits that he doesn't see her as his girlfriend, but he's interested in her as an actress. Akane is surprised to get his approval. Although he only treats her as a work partner, she is still very happy. As the celebration party ends, Aquamarin has to say goodbye to all the participants. Since he and Memo live quite close, they walk home together. During then, Aquamarin learns that Memo's dream is to become an idol, so he takes the initiative to invite her to join Bikamachi. Memo accepts Aquamarin's invitation. On his referral, she comes to Miyako's agency. As a popular YouTuber and well-known influencer, Memo is outstanding in both appearance and skills, so Miyako has no reason to refuse her. Strangely, Memo looks very nervous, as if she has something to confess. Miyako takes a closer look at her appearance and guesses that she has lied about her age. There are many idols in the entertainment industry who lie about their age, and Miyako believes that this is a normal situation, but she is still shocked to know the actual age of Memo is 25 years old, while Memo declares that she is only 18. Memo tells them that she has dreamed of becoming an idol like I since she was a child. With her mother's support, she signed up for the idol audition and entered the final round. Unfortunately, during her junior year of high school, her mother had a serious illness. In a single parent family, she had to shoulder the burden and take care of her two younger brothers. Therefore, she took a break from school and worked several jobs a day to support her brother's studies. By the time her mother recovered and her brothers were admitted to colleges, she was already 23 years old. While idol auditions usually only admit girls girls under the age of 20. She thus lost the opportunity to become an idol and could only devote herself to becoming an internet celebrity. Just then, Ruby and Kana arrive. They are moved by Memo's story and announce on the spot that she is a new member of Bikamichi. They sign up for a YouTube channel under the group's name and post videos introducing themselves. Memo promotes Bikamichi on her channel, helping them gain 10,000 subscribers. Meanwhile, their new song is under creation, so Memo proposes to practice dancing to the old songs of Bikamichi together. After a long day of practicing in the dance studio, Kana feels very tired. Unlike others, she debuted as an actress, and she doesn't want to be an idol that much. At this time, Aquamarin gives her a bottle of water, but Kana rejects it, because every time she sees him, she remembers the image of him kissing Akane, which makes her upset. Aquamarin notices that Kana has been treating him badly lately. Unable to stand her indifference, he puts the water down and turns away. Then comes the day when Aquamarin and Kaburagi plan to meet. Kaburagi fulfills his agreement and tells him about Ai's secret intelligence. When he first met Ai, she was a little girl who had just come from the countryside, always wearing cheap clothes that didn't match her as an idol. Kaburagi wanted to help her get used to the entertainment industry, thus introducing her to a theater group named Lalalai. It is worth mentioning that Akane is a member of this troupe. After joining the group, Ai seemed to change. She started caring about her appearance, and even asked Kaburagi if there were any restaurants private enough for 
for entertainers to have meals. Kabaraji speculated that the change may due to ice affection for someone. Although Kabaraji doesn't know who I liked back then, he remembers exactly what she looked like when she fell in love. If Aquamarin wants to know more, he can give him the contact of the head of the troop. Aquamarin is very grateful to Kabaraji for offering the information. While Kabaraji thinks it's not a big deal, as a producer, he enjoys helping potential entertainers. When they become popular, he can also be rewarded. In addition to Aquamarin, Group B Kamachi is also on his watch list. In the following story, B. Kamachi receives an invitation to the Japan Idol Festival. This is a very good stage, suitable for B. Kamachi's debut performance. With a month to go before the performance, they have a discussion about their positions on stage. Since the center position will be the focus of the group, they decide to go to karaoke to test their singing skills, and the one who sings the best will take the center. Both Ruby and Memo want to be the focus, but Kana doesn't really care about it. After her child star years, she tried to be involved in various fields, but none brought her good results. Even the drama she filmed some time ago is in a loss making. She feels that she can no longer attract the audience and has no interest in the important position. Learning of her thoughts, Ruby and Memo comfort Kana that she is indeed an adorable girl, and if she doesn't feel like going now, she can rest a bit and join them later. Then, Ruby and Memo take the lead in singing competitions. Unfortunately, they sing so bad that they can't even get 60. After the competition, they want to sing a cheerful song. They think of a cute song named Bell Pepper Exercise, which was actually sang by Kana when she was involved in music career. Ruby and Memo then search for Kana's name online, discovering that she has published a lot of songs. They pick a random one to listen to, which is surprisingly a good song. Just then, Kana arrives at the room, and when her song gets scored, it gains 97. According to the results, Kana rightfully gets the center position, which however, troubles her. She once tried to become a singer, but except for Bell Pepper exercise, other songs were all bleak. Therefore, she always takes herself for being ordinary in singing, reluctant to occupy the center position. Unfortunately, both Ruby and Memo are so bad at singing that they definitely can't take the responsibility. After listening to their songs, Kana has to take on the position. Before B. Kamachi officially takes the stage, Miyako hires Payan as their dance coach. At his request, they start devil training. During the process, Payan notices that Kana is very resistant to being in the center position, and thus initiates a conversation with her. Kana plucks up the courage to speak her true mind. Because her work in the entertainment industry has not gone well in recent years, she feels inferior to others. The center position means a lot to B. Kamachi, and she doesn't think she is worthy of this role. To encourage her, Payan praises Kana's acting skills. Coupled with the fact that he has seen her practice very hard, believing she is perfect for taking on the responsibility. Under Payan's guidance, Kana becomes more relaxed and confident. But unbeknownst to her, this Payan is actually disguised by Aquamarin, and the real one is on vacation by the sea. After Aquamarin's communication with him, he decided to coach B. Kamachi remotely, worried that Kana wouldn't listen to him. Aquamarin disguises himself as Payan to comfort her. The night before the performance, Ruby is thrilled. She tells Kana that she had been living a life trapped in a room and didn't have any expectations for the future. One day, she saw I on TV and immediately fell in love with her, who brought a different color into Ruby's life. It was also at that time that she met her first love. The man told her that if she became an idol, he would be her biggest fan. Finally, Ruby falls asleep thinking about her first love, Goro. Kana is very envious of Ruby, who is likely to gain a lot of favor after this performance. As for herself, Kana thinks people only liked her when she was a child, and no one pays attention to her now. Then, she goes downstairs to get some water, only to see Payan take off his headgear, and he turns out to be none other than Aquamarin. On the day of the Japan Idol Festival, Miyako brings B. Kamachi to the event site. Because they haven't made their debut, they can only stay in the common room with some underground idols. Kana, who has 17 years of acting experience, believes she has to behave well as an example. If she doesn't perform well, her teammates will also suffer. She knows that she has many shortcomings in her current self, but she must work hard to lead B. Kamachi to the stage. Before the show begins, Ruby approaches Kana. She is so nervous, hoping Kana can help ease her emotions. Unexpectedly, Kana seems even more nervous. She has failed too many times, and she doesn't want her teammates to experience the feelings she had. Ruby doesn't know much about Kana's career as a child star, but she thinks she's a very cute idol. Failure is inevitable, and they should be happy to face challenges. Kana is inspired and determined to present a wonderful debut as an idol. 
Among the audience, there are many fans of Bikamichi. As soon as Kana takes the stage, she sees many of the fans holding yellow glow sticks in their hands, which is the color of Memo. Besides, Kana also notices Ruby's performance. She truly loves being an idol, and she is more attractive than usual when she stands on stage. Kana thinks they're all better than her. She has been at a low point in her career over the years, as fans no longer like her when she grows up, and even her mother and manager have abandoned her. Just when Kana is feeling sad, she sees a Aquamarin. Aquamarin waves three different colored glow sticks and supports them all. At this moment, Kana suddenly finds her goal as an idol. She hopes that Aquamarin will be captivated by her and become only her fan, cheering just for her. After the performance, Bikamichi wins the love of many audiences. On the way home, Kana asks Aquamarin what he thinks of their performance. Aquamarin simply compliments them, because he believes that they will definitely bring more wonderful performances in the future, and there is no need to give too high a rating now. Miyako can tell that Kana likes Aquamarin and is very upset about his affair with Akane. To help them clear up the misunderstanding, she deliberately mentions Akane in front of Aquamarin, who then explains that they are just workmates and haven't seen each other after the show. Kana can't help but smile when she learns Aquamarin's true thoughts. Memo notices Akane's excessive excitement, guessing that she must like Aquamarin. Embarrassingly, her good friend Akane also likes Aquamarin, and she doesn't know who she should support. Meanwhile, Kaburaji is discussing stage plays with his good friend Raida, who has just acquired the copyright of the hit manga Tokyo Blade and intends to adapt it to a stage play. He has collaborated with Akane's troupe and chosen her as the heroine, but there aren't many young actors in the troupe, so he hopes Kaburaji can recommend a few candidates. Kaburaji admires Aquamarin and Kana, immediately mentioning them to Raida. On another day, Aquamarin and Akane meet at the dessert shop. In order to maintain as a couple for their fans, they post a selfie online. Just then, Akane mentions the stage play Tokyo Blade, where they are playing a couple, which she is happy about. Meanwhile, Kana sees the photo of them, reminding them not to post photos in real time, because it may attract some stalkers. She also overheard them discussing the casting of the stage play, revealing that she'll be acting as a character who has an ambiguous relationship with the character of Aquamarin. Hearing this, Akane suddenly gets furious. It turns out that they were child stars debuting at the same time, but the roles Akane wants always get snatched away by Kana, so their relationship is very bad. Now that they are about to star in the same stage play, neither of them wants to lose to the other. At the end of the story, everyone is fighting hard in the entertainment industry for their dreams. Among them, Aquamarin's situation is the most special. He entered the entertainment industry with only one purpose, that is, to find the murderer who killed I. That brings the end of the first season. Ashi no Ko tells a story about the entertainment industry, which is rarely seen in anime works. Although the latter part of the anime is not as amazing as the first episode, the characters with unique personalities still catch the interest of the audience. Akane and Kana, for example, are very attractive girls. Kana was a little unlikable when she first appeared, but as the story deepens, many viewers begin to like her. So far, the conflict between her and Akane has also been completely revealed, making me look forward to their competition in career and love. The anime has announced the production for the second season, and I hope the subsequent story will bring more surprises. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Your support means a lot to me.